I've talked before about how much I love mechanical reverb systems, spring reverbs in particular, because they offer a harmonically rich, slightly chaotic and utterly unique reverb experience that you just can't achieve with real-world physical spaces or with fully digital reverb recreations. Spring reverb has been a vital guitar effect since it was introduced into amplifiers in the 1960s, and outboard spring units have been popular for almost as long. Therefore, it's unsurprising that artists who like to experiment with their sound would want to mess around with real springs in a box that they can kick around on stage or in the studio. One of my favourite pedals ever has to be the Anasounds Element. It's a pedal that's capable of driving any spring reverb tank you connect to it, and it turns out I wasn't the only one to have this opinion. This pedal here is a collaboration between Anasounds and Jack White. This is La Grotte, which I believe is French for the cave. A highly appropriate name, as this takes several short springs, drives them with a dirty preamp, and gives any instrument you choose to put through it the quality of being played in some deep, earthy cavern. Prototypes of this pedal were used all over Jack White's recent album No Name, which is an absolute banger if you haven't already checked it out. White is no stranger to stacking drives and finding the toothiest, gnarliest tones, and this unit makes that super easy, as hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate. Before we go further, let's do a quick recap of how spring reverb works for the uninitiated. As we can see through this window here, the name spring reverb is quite literal. There are three metal springs in this unit, suspended under tension in a metal pan. As I tap the box, you can see them all physically jostle around, and it's that physical movement that will give us the reverb effect. At the end of each spring, there is a device called a transducer. These will convert an electric signal into mechanical movement, or vice versa. Every note you play will cause the transducers to mechanically shock the springs, resulting in them bouncing around, with that spring movement lasting long after the initial impulse has decayed. A transducer at the other end converts the spring movement back into signal, which can be mixed in with the dry signal, achieving a crude physical emulation of a reverberating space. The mechanical nature of the spring's inertia means that spring reverbs are inherently ducked. As long as a fast flurry of notes persists, the reverb effect will be minimised. But the moment the playing stops, the full crash of the reverb is able to wash in. This allows you to have huge reverb sounds without the risk of drowning out the technicalities of your playing. La Grotte gives full control over the wet reverb mix. Up to the 12 o'clock position, you are dialing in the intensity of the spring. You can do a lot with a little here. Beyond the halfway point though, the reverb mix begins to feed back on itself, drive itself into distortion, and quite frankly, you are a braver player than I if you can find anything usable in that range. I'm glad Anasounds have included that option though, even if it's something that I'd be unlikely to venture into in my own use. talk about that dry mix though, because it's my favourite part of this pedal. Not only can you shut off the dry signal completely for reverb only sounds, but the dry control is also the gain control for the always on preamp, which has significant range to drive your amp into thick distortion. This is something that interacts very well with spring reverb. 
The signal level that hits the transducers has a huge impact over the quality of the reverb sound, and with this being a Jack White collaboration, of course we should expect some interesting gain staging here. In the sound examples, I'm using the clean channel of my Tone King Imperial for a clean, fendery foundation, and I'm boosting that with a modified Distortion Plus, which has the clipping diodes disengaged. That effectively turns it into the MXR Microamp, which is one of the pedals Jack White is known to use, most likely for this exact purpose. This gives me a clean tone that's just starting to push into breakup, and when I introduce the Lagrotte preamp into the equation, I can take it from sparkling cleans all the way to full fat overdrive. The preamp on this reverb unit is the star of the show in my opinion. Without it, the effect wouldn't be particularly interesting, but the marriage of the two elements results in something sonically special. The spring reverb itself sounds beautiful and chaotic in both clean and highly driven situations, with big reverbs or more subtle settings. It even sounds monstrous on low tuned instruments, so if you play baritone or bass, you won't be left out. There's even scope for this to be used with synths. The preamp drive and the crashing short spring could add some grit to lo fi electronic stuff. This could be a studio tool slapped onto any recorded drum or vocal parts to give them extra edge. The applications for this are truly limitless, and it invites experimentation. Having it all housed in one box gives it a better signal to noise ratio, and you can still kick the thing to generate crashing sound effects. <laughs> even some internal settings to customise, like the preamp gain level and the soft start switch to fade in the wet mix after the foot switch has been activated. That's if you don't want to hear the springs crashing due to an overly heavy foot stomp. I'm going to play you out with some more sounds from La Grotte, but if you are interested in this even a little bit, I'd recommend checking out the product page on the website. You'll find the link in the description, as there are lots of extra details and sound samples up there for applications I simply can't cover in this video. As a fan of trashy, splashy, drivey analog reverb sounds, I can't get enough of this pedal. Keep it loud, and let me know what you think in the comments.
Thank you.